Ladies and gentlemen, this is El Cochino, Tom Lawler, and I'd like to welcome you to the podcast that puts the lotion on its own skin, Lucha World. Bitchin'. Welcome everyone to Lucha World Podcast, episode number 125. Fredo Esparza here, and this week we are going to talk about Andrade, formerly known as La Sombra, being released from WWE, a recap of Riot's Covidiotas show from this past Sunday, and a preview of CMLL's upcoming Friday show that will be headlined by Volador Jr. versus El Bandito for the NWA World Historic Welterweight title, as, as well as the Copa Jr. VIP Torneo Cibernetico and a CML World Trios titles match. Um, we will be talking about all that and more during this episode. So the big news this week was Andrade La Sombra received his release from WWE late Sunday night after asking for it a week prior, reportedly at WWE's Monday Raw tapings. The Wrestling Observer newsletter mentioned that he is not under any no-compete limitation. Basically, not he can um, he's able to start for any promotion immediately if he should choose, which is very unusual given WWE always tries to keep recently released talent from appearing anywhere that might have a TV deal um, by enforcing a no compete clause, usually that can run anywhere up to ninety days. Sometimes they pretty much don't don't um, really enforce it. Some I, I would assume part of the deal is that they 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 get rid of it and allow the the wrestler to wrestle to compete wherever he wants. I think it also depends on how the status of that wrestler in the eyes of WWE's um, hierarchy. Um, and unfortunately, I would assume if you're not getting, if you're not getting, if you're, if they're not enforcing that, that 90 day, um, no compete, then obviously in the eyes of, of those in charge in WWE, you're not viewed as, as big of a, a factor when it comes to, um, going to another promotion, like say somebody that they might actually have a view a little higher end, you know, which is unfortunate for Andrade because I think he's, he's, that's kind of telling you how how undervalued he was in WWE. It's pretty unfortunate, really, that they didn't really see more in him. Several WWE wrestlers wished him well, while Andrade thanked William Regal, Paul Heyman, Triple H by name on his social media. You know, again, I kind of feel that he's one of those guys that always um, leaves in a good way as far as leaving a promotion. He did that with CMLL. And now he did that with WWE. It wasn't working out, honestly. It, it, it we had already heard of um, Andrade in the past not being happy in WWE and actually co- contemplating leaving the promotion. I believe he was the one that actually spoke to Alberto El Patron, Alberto Del Rio, a couple of years ago, where he was thinking of, le- of wanting out and spoke to Alberto, and Alberto told him to give it another chance. Um, he did so. I think that was. Around that time was when he finally made his way onto NXT and started getting a, a, a decent push on that show. Um, but for whatever reason, there never was um, this huge push for Andrade in WWE. Also, once he joined the main roster, there really was, there, you know, it always seemed like it looked like they were they they were showing signs of wanting to use him. Then suddenly they just wouldn't use him properly. Who knows what the reasons are? Um, I'm sure we all know what the reasons are, but you know, for the most part. It's really another, um, I would say there's a black, another black guy as far as how WWE views talent. Um, if you can't find something for this guy to do, um, it's pretty amazing. Um, whoever's, whoever's in charge of, of these deci- decisions really doesn't, ha- doesn't really understand um, you know, how to build up talent, how to create new stars. And you know it's it's showing right now because you don't really see a lot of people. There's not a lot of interest in WWE. All you really see on social media is people just constantly complaining about how bad the product is right now. And it's not just WWE. There's a lot of um, promotions that get that as well. But it, they get it a lot in WWE, um, and it's coming from a lot of people who are very loyal viewers to those to to all the WWE shows even still watching it within the last the recent years uh, honestly like someone like myself or or an older fan who's really not been watching WWE um, television or streaming services during this time period I mean they pretty much already lost us 
honestly, for me, the only reason I had the WWE Network was for all the old footage and all the old content, um, the territories, you know, also ECW, old WWE as well. I mean, don't get me wrong. There's a lot of stuff that I haven't watched that I really am interested in watching. Um, as far as uh, Andrade, talk about dropping the ball on, on talent. It just amazes me. You, you, they were able to get somebody who, who has a great look, actually is a very reliable um, performer uh, and somehow they just didn't do anything with him. As far as his WWE run, which lasted five years, um, I would say the high point of his time there was really that um, that match with Johnny Gargano and at, for the NXT Championship. I think that was back in 2018. And honestly, from that point forward, it really kind of felt like he... He kind of like they kept going up and down with him. Like sometimes they, one week they'd really have something good for him to do, and then suddenly um, they would just switch over to something else, and then all of a sudden it would be he would be forgotten for a bit. And you know they had a really good pairing with him by putting him up with um, with Selena Vega, and somehow that didn't even that being a good pairing that didn't really seem to. Um, it kind of seemed like that was more of a of a push for Selena than. Than, than, than Andrade and you know even then they kind of just there always seemed to be something that would pop up that would just you know set set him back um, so you know he's I don't think he had the I think he could have done a lot more they could have used him a lot better at the same time uh, when you look at what his value is coming out of WWE a lot of times you'll have guys who leave WWE at a, a, after several years and the timing is just really off and when they go somewhere else they're just you know they're they're not immediately immediately thought of as being um big stars they're usually just kind of like oh here's another wwe guy uh filling out the roster and you know you know the, the the new place they go be it impact ring of honor or AEW or anywhere out new japan pro wrestling or anywhere else um, they kind of feel like they're just guys that are just filling in a spot um get maybe get a a a big push then suddenly um they kind of like the realization is that they're not really all there um there's a handful of guys that have actually succeeded outside of that um that have done well um but there's always you know a couple of guys i look at um you know rusev when he when he left um wwe and now he wrestles as miro i don't think he's at the level that at any you know he could have been had he left maybe uh, a, a, maybe a year earlier or so then again to be fair um, then you have fewer options um, right now in the United States. And I mean, I would also go with New Japan Pro Wrestling being there. Um, there's there's f more options available for Andrade. Unfortunately, in Mexico, it's pretty much um, due to the pandemic. There's really, um, I, unless you really want to do it for the fun or the love of the business, then it's worth it um, to make an appearance in, in CMLL. Or AAA, but you know, even then, um, with or without a pandemic, they're not really um, promotions that are gonna, you know, once you start making um, US, U.S. money, you're gonna have to find a way to like be in a promotion that can offer you that level of um, of an opportunity monetarily that maybe um, that I don't think CMLL or AAA can afford or match. Um, you could actually work something out. That's the one good thing is that now. Um, so many of these promotions work with other promotions outside of their countries that it's it, it might be easier for someone like say um an, so like andrade who could actually work maybe you know if depending on the promotion he could end up going wrestling for one promotion in the united states maybe something else in, in another prom, uh, in mexico or japan so he's got more of an opportunity to wrestle in in a number of um, places um, without any uh, major issue at the moment other than the fact that um, there's a pandemic and um, a lot of the there's there's so many promotions that aren't running um, that are really doing the whole empty arena thing still or limited capacity. So there's not a lot. Um, I'm guessing there's not going to be a lot of um, money out there available right now. But then that, that said, he does have a lot of options with AEW, New Japan Pro Wrestling, Ring of Honor, Impact. Um, like I said, AAA, CML are also out there. Um, it's possible he could work multiple groups, but you know there's there's a little bit of a murkiness as far as um, what promotion he chooses. To me, the other thing that I see with Andrade is that he's coming out 
very differently from how Mystico, who now wrestles as Caristico, um, I think that's a lot of people are going to make the comparison between those two and Mystico, who's now Caristico, um, had a, you know, he was coming out at a, like, you know, so much was negatively said about him in WWE, not to mention what he did there was pretty much non-existent, that his value pretty much decreased by a lot. Also, I think this, at the same time, Mystico at that point in time, and even now Caristico, um, he's more limited in what he's capable of, he's able to do or is willing to do in the ring. Um, I think as far as working in CML, he's able to do a lot of stuff that, you know, for the most part fits that promotion. And even in, in not just in, in CML, but in, in Lucha Libre in general, he's he's got a little bit more of a, a grasp on on that. Whereas internationally, he had a, his limitations. Andrade doesn't have that. Um, he's able to work with a variety of wrestlers. Um, he didn't get to show that that often in WWE just because for whatever reason, WWE likes to just stick the luchadors or guys who they view as luchadors and stick them together and not really have them work with anybody else for the most part. And I think he's he's a little bit bigger than, than what Caristico was. In, in all honesty, I think on Andrade pre-WWE was really somebody who was in big demand by um, you know by promoters whereas now be, having that de, having been a former WWE wrestler he's going to have a little bit more interest from um, the promotions uh, I don't know how this I don't know if this is necessarily means they're going to push him um, in, in any of the major promotions because you know still he still has the whole thing of being a luchador that for whatever reason um, has uh, a lot of these bookers and promoters just have a hard time getting past they tend to still keep them at a, in a certain uh, position on shows uh, when in reality they're far better than the placement on a you know on a show or on a lineup to me andrade is a main event caliber wrestler that um, should be pushed should, is somebody who you could build a promotion around and you know it shouldn't be that oh he needs to go he the only place that that's going to happen is in mexico with cml or triple a there's still some loyalty towards the towards CMLL, um, not to mention the fact that he actually has a connection through the fact that he's one of the Laguneros. So you're not only having a connection with the prom- people in charge in the promotion, although Paco Alonso is no longer there, but you're still connected to the people, some of the people that are in charge. And also you have the, the whole Lagunero thing where um, there's a lot of loyalty with that group that still consists of guys within the promotion like Ultimo Guerrero, Blue Panther, the, the list of guys that from that region is, is long that is in CMLL so um, he still has that my I, my my guess and then there's also the whole thing with what, what Rush was saying um, um, he had been teasing a, a project involving Los Ingobernables um, in Mexico it kind of seemed like it might be a, a new promotion that was starting up but it kind of seems like more likely that it's going to be the group kind of being um, rebuilt and being I don't know if it's going to be necessarily rebuilt, but just whoever's part of the group kind of taking bookings in, in Mexico. Not He's even mentioned possibly CMLL being a promotion that they might consider working, uh, which seems a little bit of an impossible thing to believe just because um, given the circumstances right now with the pandemic and the fact that CML is still running empty arena shows, I'm not sure if they're and they're also known for being a penny pinching promotion. I can't really see them making this huge um uh, run to bring in Los Ingobernables again at this point in time. I could see it happening in the future, um, especially if they're still available. Um, now, I think this might actually close the door to... I don't think it necessarily means it's going to close the door for other guys going to WWE because I think there's always this feeling within... I think that's something that every wrestler wants to do, at least have a, a bit of an... Uh, see what they could do in WWE, see if they could succeed you know, and then realize that maybe the, the, the situation isn't particularly great, so they end up leaving um, and going elsewhere. But for the most part, I think just having that that run in WWE, I don't think that's going to, um, Andrade deciding to leave after a five-year period, I don't think that's going to necessarily stop guys from wanting to go there. Um, it didn't stop them when Mystico flopped in the promotion at Sin Cara, um, so I don't see it stopping anybody else from doing that. Um, just because one person did it doesn't mean that other guys aren't going to think that they can actually pull it off. And then, and then again, you never know. Um, promotion could, there could be some change within the promotion, some philosophy. Um, one of the things that I think 
maybe helped Andrade. It really didn't help him because he didn't get pushed so much in WWE, but at least he got a little bit more of a... Uh, he didn't get... His, his, his name wasn't completely obliterated there, like, say, uh, Mystico Sincara, the first Sincara's name did, um, is that the roster the, the roster is very different from what, what it was when um, Sincara, the first Sincara, was there. You know, there are far more... Um, capable wrestlers of, of competing against be it in um you know lucha, guys who came in from who went in from lucha libre to wwe um two guys who maybe worked for the independents who are a little more familiar with the the style being you know the style that is now is very similar now um it used to be that lucha libre and japanese wrestling all these different styles were very different from american wrestling but a lot of it's kind of just blended in and and guys kind of work um a slightly similar style so or, or there's they've competed with guys who have you know they have a, somebody like they've actually wrestled somebody who may be in lucha libre while they were in on an independent show um so it's not it's not a it's not going to be as as big of a surprise um you know when My- mystico was in, in wwe i mean they had to put him against chavo Guerrero jr who had zero knowledge of lucha libre at that point in time other than the fact that the girls were part of lucha libre um he really didn't have that um, understanding of wrestling certain guys like that um, he kind of got the you know when he was in WCW kind of got the guys already when they were already um, getting a little more experience having wrestled you know guys like Dean Malenko Chris Benoit Eddie Guerrero you know guys who were you know world travelers Chris Jericho um, who actually knew how to wrestle that you know a variety of styles and could you know so that not only helped those guys compete against the luchadors but it also helped the luchadors compete against other wrestlers that maybe didn't have that type of um experience and to be fair also those those guys that wcw brought in uh were far more um i don't want to say they're they were more skilled than the current group of wrestlers but they kind of had a better understanding of um of what they were what what wcw was expecting they kind of had a better understanding so they knew what to do i mean remember wcw had I remember they had a couple of matches where it was William Regal versus Psychosis, and you wouldn't think those two guys would have a good match. And for whatever reason, they had they had they had good matches against each other and and, and had really good chemistry um, for the most part. And you know you don't really get that like nowadays. Like it's not as um, it, it's very um, you know the Vianos versus the Armstrongs. I mean, who would have thought that was going to work well? And it worked well on WCW Saturday Night. Those of us who watched the Saturday Night Show still late in in their late run remember that feud that was going on. Um, it wasn't even so much a feud, just something they were doing all the time that late that we all assumed was a feud that they were building uh, between the Armstrongs and the Vianos. Hell, disorderly conduct rustled some of the luchadors and looked good against them. So it's like I don't think I think it also is a lot of the other guys in WWE kind of have a certain uh, mentality or kind of came in through the WWE system and don't really know how to um, compete against other styles. And you see that a lot with a lot of the, a lot of, not just the, not just the luchadors, but with a lot of the guys who have wrestled on independent shows, when they wrestle guys who are maybe just WWE guys, they don't really, it just doesn't um, come across that well. Um, And honestly, a lot of those guys who are come in through WWE, I've noticed that a lot of those guys kind of tend to disappear after a period of time. They don't really continue on. Um, they'll go for four or five years, and then suddenly you, I don't. We don't really hear about them like we do, like an Andrade or some of these other guys who maybe came in through the independents. That once they're released from WWE, they can actually land on their feet somewhere else. Be it New Japan, Pro Wrestling, Impact, Ring of Honor, um, AEW, the independents, wherever they've been able to be to to go, they've been able to land on their feet. Whereas the guys who the WWE kind of like are more homegrown guys you know the the list you know the list of guys that they sign that you you're not familiar with because maybe you're not into um sports or um people who are like fitness models or or bodybuilders and they end up training in wwe i don't even think some of those people even make it through the whole um the training portion of it but i like i said i think andrade compared to what when has has a big advantage over over mystico when he came out in that he actually has a far bigger name thanks to WWE and he's a far better, um, a more complete wrestler that's capable of, um, uh, of doing more stuff in other promotions. 
I was surprised also that, you know, and honestly, I don't think it was such a big surprise because we've also seen this with um, when Rusev le left, um, Lana stayed in, in WWE and now we have Charlotte staying in WWE and, 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 so, and Andrade leaving, you know, the couples, you kind of always expect the couples to stick together. But uh, for the most part, that's pretty much been a bit of a, you know, it's not necessary something that's a necess necessity from these wrestlers. Um, so um, I, 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 I would expect as far as where he's going, I don't really know. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if AEW shows some interest in him and brings them in. I think I think there's a part of I would it be I would be I would assume the first place we might see him is uh, maybe be with Roosh and Los Ingobernables um, doing something with them. Uh, maybe on an independent show, uh, maybe uh, maybe he decides. To me, the if he wants to be with um, Rush and those guys, obviously the big option would be the to go with, um, you know, Ring of Honor in the United States. I don't think there's any restrictions where he could work as far as um, Ring of Honor or AEW, and possibly, you know, if he wants to work Japan, New Japan Pro Wrestling. I would think that would be his um, the place he would want to go. To me, that would be the the ideal place where he wants if he wants to build himself up. Um, now that he's kind of being viewed more as a heavyweight, and even in, in in New Japan Pro Wrestling, he was viewed more as a heavyweight late in his, you know, the, the, his last few appearances there. That would be the I would think that would be his first his preference. Um, then maybe AEW and Ring of Honor. The only reason I think Ring of Honor is going to get some interest is because of the the fact that you know they have Roosh, Dragon Lee, Bestia. Uh, Bandito is also their Flamita, uh, Ray Horace. So there's more of a, a contingent of wrestlers that of luchadors, which you know might actually be be a better fit for him. Uh, I think AEW would be an option as far as you know being a a place where he, if he wants to be on national television, that's the place. the The other alternative besides um, WWE, I don't know if they necessarily push him. I wouldn't be shocked if that ends. One of the things that they could that that somebody might actually consider is something with him and um, and Selena Vega reuniting um, her under a different name, obviously as Tria Trin Trinidad or whatever name she wants to use. Um, that would that was a very good combination. Um, I could see that also being a possibility, you know. But for the most part, I think that's where I think those would be the more ideal landing spots as far as CMLA and AAA. Honestly, I think right now with the pandemic going on, I don't see the and even without it, I don't see them being necessarily the landing spots for 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 Andrade. I see that more as being something that he would do just you know just to do for um you know for rust as far as wrestling in Mexico that that would be the thing. And I think he would actually give CMLL an op you know an op that would be an option. I don't necessarily think that would be a a sure thing just because of the changes since he's left that promotion and obviously with the pandemic going on, um, would, would he prefer to go to, um, triple a, um, where Roosh has had Russell previously. Then again, we haven't seen Roosh at these, um, triple a tapings. So, you know, who knows? I mean, right now that seems to be, uh, the unknown. Um, all I know is the one thing I will say is that I think WWE really underutilized Andrade, this past Sunday, Riot held their most recent show, which was called Covidiotas. Um, it was streamed live for free via Lucha Mania Monterey's YouTube channel. And I thought it was a good show. You know, for the most part, I thought it was a good show. I think there were some issues. This was actually their first live stream show. So obviously, in grand Lucha Libre tradition, we had some technical difficulties um, the audio at certain points wasn't available. Um, it, I think it would just cut out at certain points. The the video would be um, stream a little bit choppy, and um, it kind of improved as the match, as the show went on. But it still was slightly noticeable throughout the show. Um, but it was very noticeable during the the very first match, which was the Benny Rumble. Um, but other than that, I thought the I thought the it streamed live, it and it was free, so it wasn't like I was gonna get worked up about this. You know, and honestly, the, the the time when it really was really choppy was during the Benny Rumble, and I think that match wasn't something that I think that match was there just to make sure that um, they could check uh, whether or not the feed was working because you know you had uh, Fredo um, doing the commentary during that match, 
And he at certain points would, you know, ask the fans just to let him know if the, the, the audio was working, how the video was um, working. And so they kind of was that match where they were tinkering with. And also later on, they had um, two of the wrestlers that actually participated in the Betting Rumble um, on as commentators. And when they talked about the show, they really talked about how there were four really good matches and didn't really uh, mention the other match. So um, even they knew more or less that uh, what was going on. And to be fair, uh, also, they probably didn't watch the match. So, you know, the fact that they didn't watch it, that might have been also the reason that they didn't mention it. Uh, but f- to me, it probably was at the realization that that match was there just to um, kind of um, get the get the get get everyone used accustomed to the to streaming the show live personally I, um hindsight 2020 if they had to do it all over again maybe they should have just recorded it and then um you know done a premiere type of thing that you could do on you on your youtube channel um, i think that probably would have made more sense especially if you want to have the chat and have people donating during that time i think you're able to do that at the very least with 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 um with with everything you know, there even the even the promoter and some of the wrestlers could actually be chatting during the show. Um, if you would have um, if they could have um, done that, um, that's what I would suggest personally. Because for the most part, if the issue is going to be that it's going to appear choppy and you're going to have audio issues and you're going to be asking during the, the 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 stream if the if the video or audio are working, it's probably better just to do it um the way um just record it and then do the premiere option. As, and then you could actually chat with the fans, um, have somebody interact with them. I think that's some, that's the way to that that would be the to me that would be the preference. But I will say that there are a lot of fans that are very nitpicky about that. I would want the match the show to actually be live, so I could also understand that point of view as well. If you think those fans are a, a more of a louder um, voice in the audience as far as oh no we want to see it live we don't want to see it recorded or anything but honestly during a pandemic if you're going to do a i think that's the perfect thing right now honestly i don't know why more promotions um and i'm and you're, you're you are seeing this because of the, the pandemic with triple a and cml where they they actually record pre tape stuff and you know what's airing um at certain points isn't you know live they don't do it during, for whatever reason, they don't do that for the Ticketmaster live shows, uh, which they really should do as well. But I'm guessing the whole concept of, you know, the fact that Ticketmaster has live on it kind of forces them to do it that way. There's other issues besides that with that. But to me, I think that's, I would actually have just pre-recorded it and and then done that. Uh, made a little more, that would have made more sense to me. Plus, you could have edited out some of the stuff. Um, there could have been some edits done where you could have gotten rid of certain things that, um, really were there just filling time uh and also some of the some of the the cuts the camera cuts could have done could have could, you could have done something else like i said i thought it was a good show other other than the technical issues um the feed did the the stream did continue on i had no issues watch, watching it i did have one issue i don't know if it was um the roku um i started watching it on, on roku on the youtube app on roku and um i made the mistake that I wanted to rewind it, um, you know, skip back a little bit because I missed something and I did it on the Roku and the, then the, the the live feed wouldn't restart for me. So then I I just went on my browser and watched it on my computer, on my desktop and it worked. I, I was able to watch everything. And in fact, I could actually, um, I was, I think, five to 10 seconds behind other people that were watching the show because uh, certain points I heard people like talk about, oh, this this has happened. And I was still at the point where I, I, I was barely getting to that. Um, but, you know, like I said, I'm not very nitpicky when it comes to that sort of thing. Uh, to me, if it's good, that's all that matters. It's not going to bother me that that nobody's really going to spoil it for me if I see somebody say, wow, it's amazing, before I even get to that point in the match. I'm not that picky about that stuff. But I guess we should run down the show and just give my, I just want to give some thoughts on, on the matches themselves. The first match was the Benny Rumble with Madness winning it over Kyan Tai and Lord Byron. Um, Hooligan Byron, El Catrin, Mod, Mad Dog, Morte Extre- and Morte Extrema. I think this match would have been a little bit, a lot better. The other thing that happened um, due to the pandemic, there was a limited amount of people in the in the building for this show. I think it might have been um, just people who were part of the promotion and maybe a couple of, you know, just fans that were there. Um, it kind of seemed like there was, during this match, I think there were maybe like, like 15 to 20 fans 
in in attendance i don't think they were really just fans i think it was just people there that were just watching um and they could have been working for the promotion for all i you know the, the the group as far as um just setting stuff up um but you know there wasn't a lot of people so to me that kind of um anytime you do something like a like this type of match where it's gonna have like wrestlers that aren't familiar to the the viewing audience that's watching on a live stream uh, and not at the building and not people who are regulars attending those shows um, this doesn't really it doesn't come across particularly well to the rest of us so for me this kind of like this was kind of like the plus i mean i'm not a big fan of royal rumble type matches or battle royals honestly so it wasn't really my my cup of my cup of tea at this point i thought it was just an okay match maybe below average honestly the highlight was really lord byron um coming in early as hooligan byron and then later on as lord byron and really honestly the big thing out of this match was the fact that kayantai and, and lord byron ended up making up for um, a, a questionably bad match by ha- really being good commentators throughout the, the the rest of the show as they handled commentary from from the second match to the main event and they were very good um excellent in fact i think kayantai might be one of the better announcers in mexico um that i've heard I, I, he was really good um lord byron i thought was there to provide some comedy um he did a a, a, a mexican homer simpson impersonation um, and he also um, did uh, a few other impersonations, including Macho Man Randy Savage, that I really enjoyed. Um, but Kayantai was a really good commentator um, throughout the, the throughout the show. Um, I thought he did an f- excellent job. Um, the second match is really where everything picked up. From the second match all the way through the main event, I thought all the matches were good, with the main event being excellent. Second match had Iron Kid beating Aramis. Um, I thought this was a really good match. This is a, a battle of former... Um, partners they were in 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 they were part of a trio they've teamed up numerous times i think they were even in that one match in from lucha memes from several years ago i think it might actually still be in my um it might still be in my um purchase history um but they had this um really great um i think it was an eight-man tag where that that i thought was was just mind-blowing match um, really, the introduction to Aramis was really being part of this group. And I thought this match was great. Um, at this point in time, Aramis is a far bigger name than Iron Kid. And the fact that he had um, Iron Kid beat him, I think that elevates Iron Kid a little bit more. So he's able to get a little bit more of a spotlight on independent shows. And who knows, maybe this helps him move up bigger for bigger shows. Um, but Aramis was awesome in this match. I thought both guys looked great. But Aramis, um, to me, is, you know, he's 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 the... He's somebody that, you know, it's unfortunate the pandemic hit because he was somebody that was really going to get a big push, not just in Mexico, but I think in the United States, he would have been somebody that would have been all over the place. Um, Hopefully this, once this pandemic comes to an end, he'll be able to, to restart, to start where he was, you know, really where he was really getting to from, you know, his appearances in PWG where he could finally start doing some more stuff. Um, but I thought that this was a really good uh, match. Second match, um, definitely really good. Uh, at that point, I was really having, a, I, I thought it was good. But oddly enough, I kind of thought the third match, the tag match, um, los, mim- los mismos de siempre, Kratos and Prometeo beating Kill Corton and Willie ben- Banderas. I thought this match might have actually matched it as far as being good just because of the crazy spots that they were doing. And um, so I kind of, kind of match them equally um as far as like if you told me to rank the matches i kind of i would have a hard time you know you could pick out the rms match ahead of this the tag match but i kind of i kind of like the tag match it was pretty fun brian villa did not make the show he's been booked i guess he's been booked three times on on riot shows and has missed every single one of these shows um this being the third time and again he wasn't here and Willie Banderas needed a partner, so they brought in Kill Corton, and I thought this was a really good match. I dug Kill Corton's mask; it's a, it looks like a like a devil pig looking mask. Um, I thought I thought that was a I thought he looked really good in this, except for the that one um, Brio Dorada that he tried to do, um, nearly killed himself. I don't know what it is about the that Brio Dorada, Brio Cometa. Maybe like if Ray Cometa has struggled to do that dive. Um, I don't know if other guys are, are really... I, I think it's, you're destined to have one one botch with that spot, with that dive. 
that it's like it's almost like I think we almost have to give a pass to anybody who does it just because um, we already know that one person's gonna do that, make that mistake, and um, here you had um, Kill Corton do it, but you know they had a couple of sequences that were really good. Um, Banderas looked very uh, very impressive. Um, Banderas and Brian Villa are a tag team that wrestles a lot in Guadalajara. I don't think I had seen them prior to this. I may have. They were always booked on all the independent shows in, in, in Guadalajara. So, um, so they, I, I know them more because of how many posters they were on that, that, um, that I'm familiar with. So, you know, they're they're kind of that team that that's always you know one of those indie groups tag teams that you're 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 always hearing about, reading about, but I um, haven't seen. So finally getting a chance to see Banderas, he was very impressive. Same thing with the, the technical team of Kratos and, and Prometeo. Um, I thought they looked really good as well. Um, just a fun match. Um, there was a couple of, of, of botches, um, like I said, the, the Brio Dorada. But other than that, this was a fun match. Um, definitely recommend watching that match. Really, really enjoyable. I don't know. Like to me, that's that that's what makes it fun. You're not going to you're not going to get um. It wasn't. It wasn't this. Um, I think also the fact that they were new to me. It, it kind of also helped the fact that it was something fresh. I think that's what I, I enjoyed most about this was the fact that it wasn't something. And guys really busting their asses trying to do something well. Um, uh, I'm so tired of seeing CML and it's constantly like, you know, guys that you kind of know have talent and have shown that they have talent and they're just not really doing a good job because they're kind of limited because of who they're in there with or because of what you know what they're expected to do in the match so it kind of doesn't come across well well these guys actually got to do what they wanted to and you know they actually looked really good and the effort was really good up next was latigo beating eric ortiz in a number one contenders match winner would earn a shot at the riot championship and again, I thought this was a really good match. This was very different from the previous two matches, which were more um, high-flying, um, big spot type of matches. Um, this was more of a, a, a submission hold type of match. Ortiz, really good. I've seen him a few times on independent shows, I think, um, that I've actually had a chance to see like on YouTube. Very limited number of times I've seen him, but he's, he's very impressive. Latigo, I've been a big fan of. Um, seen him in AAA and also on independent shows, and he's always been very good. Uh, and again, he was excellent in this match. Um, I just thought these two guys looked really good and did a great job. They were making jokes about Ortiz being somebody who's been wrestling for so many years. Um, I think his, his nickname was Ch Eric Chamaco Ortiz. Um, from the because there's, there's a lot of Ortiz wrestlers that have used the Chamaco Ortiz name, and um, they kind of just passed it on to him but there were a lot of people just like calling him different stuff and because he's no longer a chamaco so they started calling him Ch chavo ruco you know making jokes about him having wrestled you know some for decades in the past so i thought that was pretty enjoyable to listen to and read from you know fans that have actually seen him a little more often that are more familiar with his work but i thought this was an excellent match i really enjoyed it um really looking forward to seeing what happens next with the Riot Championship, especially with um, the the winner of this match getting a chance to face Arez, um, hopefully maybe in the next show. The main event for the show was Arez beating Hijo del Vikingo to retain the Riot Championship. I thought this was an excellent match. I actually watched it a second time, and it was it, it was far better than than my initial viewing, just because the initial viewing I, I was. I was busy not only, you know, obviously multitasking, watching the show and also doing other things. And the second time I actually sat down and watched it and I thought this was even better. Um, this was kind of more of a mix. If you take the the Iron Kid, Aramis and Latico, Eric Ortiz matches and kind of like combine them together, they kind of had th that type of mix with Ares and Hijo del Vikingo. Um, I thought they did a great job. Excellent match. It, it really shows... I think it really shows how much Ares has kind of um, progressed as far as being a, a top name in Mexico. We're now, you know, I mean, he's gone from being the guy who, I, honestly, for me, it was like for years, he was always, Ares to me was always the guy who kind of had painted his face with, you know, cool designs and got the, the crap beaten out of him by, by Pentagon Jr. Uh, on an indie show. Not on purpose. It was actually during a match where it actually, 
he took quite the the beating from Pentagon Jr. I don't mean it like he got beat up in in you know obviously within wrestling, um, but um, he's come a long way where he's now a really good um, wrestler, um, very um, very multi dimensional in what he can do in the ring. Um, I thought the finish of this with the with I think it I think they called it a Spanish fly, but you know it looked so. Um, it first of all looked really dangerous, but at the same time these two guys are capable of doing that stuff. And the only reason that I think it looked dangerous to me was because I had just seen uh, Flyer and Okumura botch a Super Frankensteiner, um, which you know is a spot that is like I've heard guys tell me that they, they just won't do. I remember uh, when Kurt was wrestling, and there was an indie guy, an indie luchador here that wanted him to do the the Super Frankensteiner, and Kurt pretty much said no, and he still tried to do the spot, and Kurt kind of just fought him off to do it during the match to not do it. Uh, and you're talking about Kurt is I think during that time was probably in his late forties. It wasn't gonna do that spot. Now imagine like Okumura being told to do that spot. Not only is he in his forties, but he's also coming off a, a neck injury and you know, several other injuries that he's had throughout his career, but a very serious neck injury and doing that spot and somehow Flyer wasn't able to do it. Obviously, Flyer sees Volador Jr., his uncle that does that spot, and you very rarely see Volador Jr. and his opponent. I mean, I don't think I've ever seen them. I I think they might have slipped off where they can't do the or they can't do the spot properly, but I've never seen them like fall from the, you know, the top rope all the way to the floor and in that match that that happened. Um so I'm watching RS Hijo Vikingo doing stuff on the on the on the top rope and you know that just kept coming into my head like oh my god I hope this I'm not seeing another Flyer Okamura disaster. Uh, fortunately for Flyer and Okamura they're okay but um that's not something you want to see happen on a wrestling show and fortunately these two um were able to do a lot of cool stuff without getting hurt. But it was a really fun match. Like I said, the finish was really good. It looked like a Spanish fly. That's what the that's what Kai and Tai called it. I guess I'll go with it. It kind of looked it, it, and I would say it kind of did look like it, it kind of did look like a, a a variation of the Spanish fly. Um, but it was it was a cool match. Hijo de Vikingo, the guy is amazing. I don't know at what point are we going to get to see him wrestle? You know, in the United States, and also. You know, the one good thing is that he's he's he took independent bookings and he gets to work with um, RS. But I, I saw the Cup Stand mention this, like whenever he works triple A type shows, um, he doesn't get this type of match. What I mean by triple A um sponsored shows or you know, promoted shows, it's the guys who like run um the promoters who run um shows with triple A talent. They usually have tag or trios matches in main events. And they usually don't have like a big singles match involved on the shows. And you would think Hijo de Kingo would be somebody that people would want to just come up with dream matches while he's available. Hopefully someday we'll get Hijo de Kingo versus someone like Titan. I really would like to see that. That would be like, that's really the one match I would really like to see as far as if you were to get CML, someone from CML and someone from AAA. That would be something I would really like to see. Um, but this was an outstanding match. R is getting the win. He gets to wrestle Latigo on the next, I would guess, on the next Riot show. Don't know when that will happen. You know, just an excellent main event. The, the last four matches, like I said, were great. When I rewatched it on, on YouTube, um, the quality was still kind of um, the same as it was when it was streamed live. Hopefully, once they put put it up on Pivot Share or on one of their um, the services that 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 you have to pay to watch it. Or even if they re upload it onto YouTube, hopefully it'll, it'll be um, better quality. To me, you to me, I think you leave one of these shows available on on YouTube just because you want to attract fans to watch your other shows. And this seems to me like it's it's kind of a match, the show that you kind of just want to use to introduce the fans to Riot. I've seen a couple of matches that they've posted or made available for free. But um, this was really the first full Riot show that I've seen, and I thought it was a fun show. Um, definitely something that I would probably go out of my way to watch more often. Um, I know a couple of weeks ago, somebody asked me what the best independent promotion was. And, you know, usually I think the ones he asked me were, was it Riot, Lucha Memes, um, IWRG? But, uh, you know, honestly, it's going to vary depending of during the time period and whether or not who's available for those promotions. So, like, for me right now, Riot's, by far a far better promotion just because it's a little more organized 
I look at Lucha memes and the period that they were, when they first started was really like a, a good run. But right now it kind of feels like they're just like, I don't know. I don't think they're, they, they, they book a lot of stuff that I'm not really that into. Um, here you had um, Hijo de Vikingo versus Aris was something that I definitely wanted to watch. Then they added, you know, Aramis who was supposed to wrestle Jimmy. Jimmy wasn't able to wrestle because of an injury. Although as Fredo mentioned on the, on the, on the live stream, Jimmy really was willing to um, to wrestle despite being injured, um, but they told him it wasn't necessary for it. It, it was be- they felt it was best for him to get, you know, more rest, and they could find somebody to replace him. And they ended up getting Iron Kid, who I thought was a very good replacement. Um, somebody who has actually been on, I think he was on a couple of AAA shows, so he's somebody that's already on on the radar. And another person that I think has a lot of talent out there that you know it's it's gonna it's gonna be um interesting to see what happens obviously down the road you're gonna get jimmy i hope we get jimmy on a riot show and because i've been very high on jimmy going back to his time as as one half i think it was one half of the nerds uh with kevin um jimmy has has since outgrown his nerd look and now he's got a cooler look to him um he kind of reminds me a bit of um of ronnie mendoza when he was when he was wrestling as jitsu getting back to riot show i think it's i definitely give it a thumbs up a good show um like i said if you could if you could sit through the 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 choppiness and a couple of the glitches it's a perfectly watchable show um fun show to watch you could you could skip the the benny rumble unless you're from that region and plan on attending those shows then maybe watch the 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 benny rumble i just noticed um um Cubs fan didn't have one of the participants' name on there. I think um, I think his name was um, I can't remember what his name was, but I think it was Ori- Original or something. I'm trying to remember who it was, but he was also on the Benny Rumble, and and Cubs fan forgot to write his name on there, on the on his recent post. Uh, but like I said, fun show. Check it out. Um, if you have money to um, donate for it, I highly recommend it. I think they still have a, a donating page on Donadora. That you, I, I think it might be on the, on the, on the. I'll post the link to the video as well on the, on the, on when I post this podcast, um, just so you could check it out. And I, I'll, maybe I'll, if I find the Torah, the, the, the donation page, I'll, I'll put that as well. I'm not sure if I'll do that just because I don't know if it, how long that donation thing will be on, but um, I'll put it up and see if you're interested in donating. Uh, please do so because I think this is this was a fun show and I think it, I think Riot has a. a has a positive they're going on the positive direction um the right direction as far as shows and what they're doing as far as giving us something different besides what we normally get from cmll AAA, and some of the other bigger independent promotions or more established promotion independent promotions like iwrg they're giving us something different and i think it's um it's 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 fun to have a little bit of a, a different um product from mexico CMLL's next show will be this upcoming Friday, March 26th from Arena, Mexico. It will be streamed live via Ticketmaster Live. I, I hate when I hate the fact that it's called Ticketmaster Live because I have to I have to say live twice. And the other thing is that they they, they for whatever reason um, they really take the live thing seriously because they only air it live. You don't get a VOD on that on that service for whatever reason. I do not know why they don't do it. It is absolutely ridiculous. I think they're late, they're they're losing money on the, just on the thought of not having that available to people who are paying for it. It's crazy, but um, yeah, CML's next show will be available on there at this moment. You could actually get it. Get the you, if you order the show, you'll get a discount at this point in time. If you wait until Friday, it'll be full price. But I think right now it's only like nine bucks or something like that, US dollars. So um, if you really want it, get it. It's a four match show. Copa Junior VIP is the the big um, the big focal point of this, supposedly. Uh, but that's really not the big match on the show. As I said, the four matches that are available on the show, uh, it's actually not bad i mean it's not a bad lineup i'm not a big fan of the women's match because cml's women's division has been very underwhelming but um the opening match for this show will be la jarochita and yuvia defending the Me- mexican national women's tag team titles against dallas and stephanie backer 
So the good in this match is you have La Jarochita and Stephanie Vacker. The bad about this match is you have Yuvia and Dallis. So the odds of this match being good are slim because usually the bad in the women's matches far more outweigh the good that is done in those matches. And I would not be shocked if this match just ends up being the usual type of Dallas match where she ends up dominating her opponents. And I wouldn't be surprised if there was a title change in this in this match. Not a big fan of this. I kind of would have preferred if it was like La Jarochita and Yuvia versus Amapola and Stephanie Vacker. That would have been an interesting match. Uh, speaking of the women's division in CMLL, I don't know how many of you guys have been following Estrellita's Instagram and TikTok and social media, but she's getting very risque on those uh, those those social media platforms. And I don't know what's going on with um, Estrellita, but you know, for about a two three year period of time, she was very uh, much talking about being a I think she's still talking about being a doctor, although um, she made an, a couple appearances on Cybernetico's um, YouTube channel, and they kept joking that she was um, studying to be a nurse, but she says she's studying to be a doctor. I don't know. It's kind of it's kind of weird because I thought she was for the longest time. I thought she had gotten married or something a couple of years ago because she was so um, she was so uh, she changed so suddenly and was you know wasn't so risque in her in her appearance. Even when she wrestled, she didn't look um, as you know she wasn't wearing the dominatrix outfits or the policewoman outfit, um, which I'm a huge fan of by the way the the policewoman outfit. But um, she had gone away from that stuff. But suddenly she's gone back to being very risque and, you know, it, it, a lot, showing a lot of um, showing a lot of um, a lot of estrellita on, on those services. I don't know what's going on, but um, also she mentioned on 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 Cibernetico's YouTube channel that she wanted she she heard a lot of fans say that she should start an OnlyFans site. And the biggest shock out of that whole thing isn't that Estrita knows what OnlyFans is and is contemplating doing an OnlyFans. The biggest shock is that Cibernetico had no idea what OnlyFans was. I mean, this guy dated a porn star in the past, so it's not like it's not like he's unfamiliar with the the whole concept of you know of the adult entertainment world. But for whatever reason, I don't know if Cibernetico was just joking and not claim you know pretending not to know what what that is. But for the the weirdest thing, I mean, I I don't know what's going on uh, with Estrita, but it's interesting. It, it's interesting. Getting back to this show, um, hell, Estrita replacing Dallas would be would have probably been an, an upgrade just for the whole, uh, the enjoyment, the 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 entertainment value of Estrita. I I think I've said this a few times on shows is that she'll have like this thirty second spurt, momentum spurt, where she she looks like she's gonna have a really good match, then suddenly she misses a, a dive, or she misses a drop kick, or, or or screws something up, and then you know suddenly we don't hear it from Estrita in the match the rest of the way. At least that's better than whatever Dallas is gonna do, honestly. Um, but I don't expect a lot from this match. I would be surprised if it's anywhere above okay. I I just don't see it. I I pretty much I, I've from all the women's matches I've been watching from CML lately. It's it's very they they've they very rarely go beyond average. And, you know, average is depending on, you know, one person's average is really bad. Others, it's not very good. Um, the second match will be Copa Junior VIP, which has the participants will be Angel de Oro, Mystico, Caristico, Atlantis Junior, Soberano Junior, Felino, Nero Casas, Mephisto, Star Junior, Stuka Junior, Dragon Rojo Jr. and Felino Jr. This is Felino Jr. Um, this is Tiger's debut as Felino Jr. on a show, although he's going to be appearing as Felino Jr. He actually already wrestled as Felino Jr. against um, Mystico on a TV taping that I think aired on one of the the random TV networks that, there, that, they, that CML is available on um, that's going to be posted on YouTube the following week. The, I think the Sunday after the... After the the, this pay-per-view so I mean in a way I guess for some fans this is going to be the this is going to be the debut for others it's really the second match for him um, I don't know I don't really expect I don't expect CML to suddenly give Felino Jr. Um, Tiger a huge push just because he changed his name 
best case scenario for him is he outlasts Dragon Rojo Jr., <laughs> Stuka Jr., um, who else is one of the likely guys to get out early? Really, and Star Junior. Those are really. If he could outlast those three guys, um, that's already a, a, a minor win. But if he could outlast those three, along with his dad Felino, uh, maybe he outlasts Angel de Oro, um, Atlantis Junior, Mephisto. Then maybe that means they're going to do something with him. But if he doesn't outlast um, Dragon Rojo Junior or Star Junior, then um, we're not really going to, don't expect too much out of Felino Jr. Honestly, I, I would assume he's pretty much just going to be in the same spot. Uh, my guess is it's probably either going to be Caristico, Mystico, um, getting this the win at, at Copa Jr. VIP. Uh, maybe somebody else, surprise winner, but I think those two are the the, 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 the picks. Sobrano Jr. probably being the other one, but um, those, to me, Caristico or Mystico are the, the, the obvious big picks, the the. the to win that match um dragon rojo jr this is his first match back in i think two years i i don't know man honestly he's somebody that i think maxed out as a very good middleweight wrestler i said this in a few um on when i was writing about the 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 best trios of all time and i kind of mentioned dragon rojo jr when i was talking about the girls del infierno girls laguneros the the history of that group i think he maxed out as a as a as a as a good middleweight wrestler to now pretty much he's pretty much through do it to injuries he's kind of just now kind of going to end up having to regress to being in that okumura dark magic mysterioso junior sagrado group of of rudos it's unfortunate because i thought he had a lot of potential and i think the one guy that's kind of they've kind of lost dropped the ball on is really polvora that he's somebody that i think they should have found a way to do something with them. And, you know, for the most part, you know, there's so many guys above Polvora that they don't do anything with. So, honestly, it's not like it's this big um, this big shock what's going on. But like I said, I think Caristico or Mystico are going to win this. Um, the third match is Los Guerreros, Laguneros, Ultimo Guerrero, Euphoria, and Gran Guerrero defending the CML World Trios titles against Nueva Generación Dinamita, Sanson, Cuatrero, and Forastero. I don't know. I'm kind of expecting this to be a good match, but maybe something that's not going to like really be, you know, it's just going to fall into that. Okay. Another good trios match that we'll soon forget about in a few weeks, just because I'm not really that high on, on Nueva Generación Dinamita because they've pretty much been doing the same thing over and over again. And now they go against the Rudo tree that also does a lot of stuff that is very repetitive. The one big difference between girls and, um, NGD is that girls like Guneros are a little more um, honestly even if they repeat stuff they're so good in the ring that they're actually able to do some stuff that is a little different um, so I think they're going to have to I think NGD is going to have to bring, bring it um, bring it up a notch for their match but to be fair also it's also you know there's so many guys in CML that you could just say that feels like they're going through the motions and at one, they go through that and then suddenly they, they look get hot again but for the most part, you know, it really depends on how they're, they're, they're booked. Um, the main event will be Volador Jr. versus El Bandido for the NWA World Historic Welterweight title. This has been a match much like um, Brian Villa getting booked on riot shows and no showing. This match has no showed on CML shows at least, I think, two occasions. And then the third time, I think, was when they canceled this show. I think they announced this match for that um, Copa vip junior vip in um in december and then it got canceled so now um this is i believe this is the fourth time that they're going to try this match hopefully they do pull this off um bandito worked um roh shows an roh show so he should be free for this show <laughs> um yeah i don't know like honestly it wouldn't shock me if Wednesday we hear a, line, a lineup change again. So I'm waiting until Wednesday to to decide if I'm going to buy this show because I wouldn't be shocked if suddenly on, on Wednesday we get a, a, guess what, Bandito is unable to wrestle due to a, a prior commitment and now he's wrestling elsewhere. Um, so who knows? Um, but that said, if this match does happen, this should be an excellent match. I think Bandito and Volador Jr. are perfect complements to each other as far as opponents. Volador Jr., tends to be repetitive but the big difference is that when he's in there with somebody of the skill level of bandito who is also happens to be a technique who wrestles more as a technical and does a little bit more of a, a high flying style 
that gives Volador Jr. a little bit more of a, uh, a a little bit more of things to do. I wouldn't be shocked if he bust out some stuff that we haven't seen since um, since he wrestled Andrade La Sombra or Mascara Dorada. This would be something that that I would I would like to see um, this. You know, I really would like to see this match come across and, and work out um, because I think this this could be a, a show stealing type of uh, match, um, something that could be a match of the year candidate. Um, to me, that's really the one match that I would say has a shot of really standing out, and probably the only reason I would order this pay per view would be to watch that match um, because it's something that I definitely want to watch and should be fun. I mean, it's something that that's that. We don't know if we're going to be able to get this again because, you know, obviously with the changes in in, in guys' contracts coming to an end in, in other places. And who knows, I think Bandito at some point. Although, to be fair, I mean, I, th- I thought a lot of people were expecting Bandito to get, um when his contract was up with Ring of Honor, I think a lot of people were expecting AEW to, like, go after him right away. And they really didn't. They, did, they didn't really go after him. And instead, he stayed in Ring of Honor. So, you know, maybe this means that he's going to be available more for CMLL in the future. Hopefully, that is the case because I think there's still a couple of other dream matches I would like to see Bandito. I would really like to see Bandito wrestle Titan as well. Um, Sobrano Jr. and a couple of other guys as well that I, I think he would be, um, he'd have fun working against. Caristico, you know, just the, uh, there's a lot of guys that I think Bandito could definitely, um, and not to mention also teaming up with Ultimo Guerrero again because I thought they were a really fun tag team. Um, but that's the show. I don't know. I think I am going to, I think I will order it. But like I said, I'm going to wait till Wednesday <laughs> just to make sure Bandito will be on the show and they don't suddenly say, hey, you know, he's not going to be able to make it. Um, I wish there was something other than that women's tag match, like a like when they did the anniversary and they actually replaced um, the girls Aguineros match with um, with with Titan versus Soberano Jr., which en- which ended up being one of the best matches of last year. Um, I think this is something that I think we could all hope for. But for the most part, this if this is the match that they're, the show that they're going to give us, it may be worth it for a couple of bucks. I think the top two matches, like I said, Volador Jr. Bandito for me is probably going to be. A really great match. I think the other two matches, the Copa Junior VIP, depending on how it's um, planned out and laid out, could be good. And I think the the trios match should be should be good. Just depends on how what your level expectations are for those um for those two matches. Well, that's it for this week. Hope everybody enjoyed the show. Uh, we'll be back again, probably after the if if I do order the the pay per view on on Friday. Maybe after that pay-per-view, I'll do another show um, and there will be more news available from during that time. Uh, check out the luchaworld.com page for more updates. Uh, check out retrowrestling.com for your old school wrestling reviews. And if you want more wrestling content, check out the Lucha World Patreon page at patreon.com slash luchaworld uh, where we have Lucha, the Lucha Classica podcast, Lucha Magazine write-ups, the Video Vault, which features 10 DVD titles every month. And we also have other other um, audio that I've recorded over the years on there, including the Retro Wrestling Podcast. And I think I did a few other shows where I recapped um, a couple of documentaries that I watched. And that's available on there. And you could also list, follow us on uh, on the Retro Wrestling YouTube channel, you'll find the Lucha World podcast as well as Retro Wrestling reviews and other content on there, including uh, my my the list section where you have the ten greatest luchadoras, ten greatest trios, ten greatest tag teams on there, as well as other content that will be available in the future. So again, everyone, talk to you again soon. Take care.